All right, guys. Uh, Hell22 here with Mermaider. Hey, hey. We are back for another installment in the Sorrow Eternal interview series. Oh, yeah. Uh, this week, kind enough, Melissa and Jan from Echo Terra are here to answer some questions for us. Thank you very much for offering to help us tell our story. Yep. Thanks for having us. So, when Jan and Jonas started Echo Terra in 2007, what was the musical goal? Was there a fleshed out concept that was waiting to be realized, or did this start as just an open ended project and evolve into what the band is today? Back then, uh, Jonah and I used to live in Atlanta together, so we'd get together pretty often and just work on songs. Um, after having, I don't know, maybe three or four songs written, we saw that it was going in a new direction for us with a much more symphonic element, and we both agreed that these songs would be best suited for our female vocalists. Since originally we didn't really have the intention of touring or playing live or anything like that, basically just to record these songs and put on an album, a friend of ours suggested that we ask Suvi Vertinen if she'd be interested in doing the vocals. So we got in touch with her and we really liked her style and she's a very nice person. And then we just started working with her and recorded the songs and eventually put out the album the first album, The Law of One. In 2009, Melissa and Adam stepped in to replace Suvi and John, respectively. How did the sound of the band change through the course of that switch? Well, Suvi and I, uh, Melissa, have very different voices and ranges. When we decided to rework three of the songs for the In Your Eyes EP, it was mostly because Suvi has a very low voice, which frankly I couldn't have sung live well at all. Um, also, the guys were ready to take the band to the next level, and they needed people that could play live in the band. John Gensmer was very busy with Epicurean, and so the need for Adam was there. And also with Suvi living in um, uh, Sweden, I believe, um, they needed a singer here. So that's why I came in. <laughs> On to the new album. Tell us a little bit about the concept of Land of the Midnight Sun. Was there a shared vision or story in mind? Um, Jonah and Jan worked together on the songs with... Uh, most of the lyrical content written by Jan and the music by Jonah. Much of the impetus for the songs are derived from hidden agenda theories, plots to enslave the human race, things that are all symbolically hidden in plain sight, actually, um, present day. The songs are about being aware of these around you, and because knowledge is power and will keep you from further enslavement, um, so they're actually songs of hope, of taking back your own life from these forces all around you that many don't really know exist. Um, we decided against the obvious direction, which would be to take a dark, depressive sound um, in the music, um, because hidden agendas are terribly dark. Um, instead, though, I mean, the message of the songs is really about power, excitement, taking back your own life. So they are positive songs, done in a really very classic symphonic metal style, hearkening back to sort of the earlier roots of the genre. So what inspired your artwork, and who created the album cover for Land of the Midnight Sun? During the early stages of the writing process, after we only had a couple of songs written, I was just surfing the internet, and I came across this really great piece of artwork. And I just stared at it, and really kind of, I kind of got lost in it. So I got a hold of the artist and talked to him about it a little bit. And then I just uh, decided that we should purchase it and that should be our album cover. Even though traditionally you're supposed to, you know, wait till have, you have all the songs written and have a good idea of where the direction is going before you kind of design a cover. But I, I really felt it. As soon as I saw this cover, I felt that this is going to be the album cover. And we actually kind of wrote some of the songs around the cover. Um, when you look at the cover, uh, there are a lot of different images and themes there. Um, there's, there's a lot of color and a lot of punch to this uh, album cover. But overall, the imagery really relates to the music and that you see a person grounded, arms reaching up beyond this pyramid in the background toward color and life and um, almost like the sky, um, the image of sort of a rebirth uh, between both night and day, sort of between reality. Um, this sort of largely encompasses the themes of the music. At least that's that's the way that I feel about the cover. And the artist's name is uh, Nathan Ayel Jadi. It's very easy to compare your sound to a band like Nightwish. And while that is obviously not a bad thing, there are certainly differences in the music itself. What do you think separates Echo Terra from the seemingly endless amount of female-fronted metal bands? Um, you know, there are a lot of bands out there now. Um, 
and the direction of the genre of symphonic metal has really changed quite a bit from back in the late 1990s when the sound really had more of a classical style voice, um, keyboard heavy music, uh, you know, but still keeping that raw metal sound. Today you hear more highly produced bands, um, a pop edged voice, darker music with full orchestras that are actually being hired. Um, it's almost like symphonic metal is more symphony and less metal. That's sort of the direction it's gone. It's not a bad thing. The genre has evolved. Um, so that's, you know, that's where it's evolved too. Echo Terra's music in a way harkens back to that nostalgic beginning in a way. It's, it's a raw live production. It is keyboard heavy and it does have a classical voice. Um, for me, that is the sound I as a performer grew up in. So, um, so I guess for me to go back to that place, it's, it's, it's a comfortable place. It fits like a glove. So yeah, that's, I guess, what would kind of set us apart in this day and age, I think. You have all had success with other bands in the past. What has it been like working together in Echo Terra as it compares to your previous experiences? Um, we approach this band so much more different than we did in the past uh, with other bands. Um, first of all, we're all in a much different place than we were in our 20s. All of us are either married and have kids or stable jobs, mortgages, real life obligations. Um, we, but we do Echo Terra because we love music. We love to make music. We have no delusions about the music industry anymore. Um, so we approach it a little more level headed. I mean, we're not going to get picked up and handed a million dollar advance. That does not exist. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, and that's fine because frankly, again, you know, success is defined different to each person. Do I feel I've had success in my previous bands? Yeah, no. I think all of us feel that we have had success and we haven't had success. Um, do I feel we're finding success with Echo Terra? For us personally, yes. Yeah, because bottom line is we do it for the love of it. We know we're never going to be rich off of this or probably never even make any money off of this. But at the end of the day, we're proud of what we do and that's all that matters, and hopefully there's a few fans out there that like what we do as well. As individual artists and as a band, who are your biggest influences? Um, <laughs> well, you know, the genre, you know, began with Nightwish, but I am really not at all personally influenced by, Night by Tarja's singing. Um, sure, we both sing classically, but she was never an influence of mine. Vocally, I would say that singers like Renee Fleming are extraordinary because of the emotion in her voice. And for that same reason, so is Adele. So um, per, I guess for me, what influences me are emotions, stories, and ideas. Well, my favorite band is probably like most people is Iron Maiden. And, you know, I grew up on listening to Sabotage, Judas Priest, Hammerfall, Halloween, Stradivarius, Gamma Ray. All of those have had a part on my influences as far as what I like to do musically. As far as lyrically, I'm a huge Rush fan and to me Neil Peart is probably the biggest inspiration as far as lyrics go. And uh, as far as vocalists, I, probably my all-time favorite female vocalists anyway are the two ladies from ABBA, Sarah Brightman, Pat Benatar, and Tarja, and of course Melissa. We know that people in metal bands do not listen to metal exclusively, so what are some of the bands and artists that you've been listening to lately? Um, some bands and artists that I've been listening to, you know, because of my day job, I listen to a lot of musical theater lately. <laughs> um, but you know, I've always really loved, uh, Viking metal. I love Tear. Um, Trail of Tears is, has always been a, a, one of my favorite bands. You know, I'm also listening to my, um, to my fellow bandmates bands a lot, uh, Grace Point and Pyramaze and Avian. Um, so that's been a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, it's fun. You grow up and you listen to music and you fall in love with it and you always dream of being a musician and all that stuff. But then, um, you know, when it becomes kind of like your job and your career and you listen to music all the time and then you kind of like, you need to take a break. So I actually don't listen to as much music as I used to, but usually if I'm driving my car, I'll have my iPod on and I have like 19,000 songs on there and just have it on shuffle and listen to all my favorite tunes. Are there any bands, big or small, that you'd really like to tour with in the future? And are there any plans for a North American tour? Well, I mean, we would pretty much tour with anybody as long as the tour made sense and, you know, all the bands complement each other properly. Uh, 
you know, there's <laughs> you can't really mention anybody because we pretty much like all the bands out there, and there's no one out there that we don't like and we won't tour with. And you know, if the right situation comes up, we'll gladly go out with anybody. With the album release quickly approaching, what's next for Echo Terra? What are your plans, and what can we expect for this band in the coming months and years? We just recorded a video, which will be released October 1st. Um, for three of us, it's the first time we've ever done a video, so that was exciting. Um, it was super hot, though. My God. <laughs> we picked the hottest weekend in Minnesota to decide to go outside and shoot a video. Um, but we do have some concert plans coming up as well. Um, we hope to gig around the Americas for now and just kind of see what happens. Um, certainly more information on that will be released soon. Yeah, and we're already working on new material, and you know we already have the third album in mind. Lastly, the release date of the album will be October 17th, 2011, through Blinding Force Records. Can we expect to see this one on store shelves, and where is the best place for people to grab the new album? Yeah, on October 17th, we will release the album. Uh, it will be available on both physical, compact disc, and digital downloads. The CD will feature a 16-page booklet full of pretty cool pictures and artwork and stuff and of course lyrics we're working with Sonic Cathedral they're gonna help us out with distribution so the goal is to have the CDs in stores worldwide you know within a couple three months after the release date but initially you can just pick it up directly from us at blindingforcerecordings.com it'll be at amazon.com iTunes Napster CD Baby all the usual online stores um, yes, but we'll keep our Facebook, MySpace, and Blinding Force Recordings pages up to date with details on that. So thank you guys again uh, for giving us the opportunity to do this interview. We really appreciate it, and we wish you guys the best of luck. And um, thank you so much, Sour Eternal, for, um, for all of your coverage and for your great review of us. And um, again, for just letting us kind of sh you know, share our story. Um, we really appreciate it. And uh, hope you have a great night. Thanks. Yep, thanks a lot. And we hope to see you all soon.